Looking around this, this recycling facility, it just makes you massively aware that you're at a product graveyard. This is where bad things come to die. This is where really badly designed products end up. Things become waste for lots and lots of reasons. Sometimes they just wear out, and that's the main reason. That's, uh, that's my motto, is buy right, buy once. And I'm seeing televisions that are under a year old. Some of those TVs are really badly designed. You can't remove the little backlight from the LCD panels really easily. And that can be changed quite simply. What most people don't realise is that the, nearly the entire periodic table is in your house, and all the products that you buy and own. And when you throw them away, that resource is it, it, just being lost. We have a problem now with materials that we need to keep fueling our industry and our growth and the high tech technologies uh, that are so important to living a more sustainable life. The inspiration for this project came from when I went to visit a recovery facility in the Netherlands and I was watching a guy take the condenser out of the back of a fridge and he was really, really struggling to take this piece out because it was the most valuable piece of the fridge. And I was just thinking, wouldn't it be incredible, actually, if we had all the designers who design fridges and who design different electrical equipment to stand next to these people and just see how badly this piece was designed for disassembly. It also made me realise the scale of the challenge. When we've got 90% of our products we buy becoming waste within six months, it's really key that disassembly is part of the design brief. My father's always had this ethos of designing timeless products and not, you know, having people wanting to discard them as quick as possible because they're not in fashion anymore. The big terror is that, you know, I'm putting all my effort into designing lovely products that aren't people's experience of life. But yet, actually, in reality, I'm just, you know, leaving several containers worth of landfill behind me as I wander off. Design can't answer all of these questions and these challenges on its own, but it plays a really, really key role. And the Great Recovery Project is about bringing together all the people that are involved in the big loop of all the products and the processes that we do and actually trying to co-create solutions together. Sustainability is a system and we haven't been taught to think in systems. And true design is about being thoughtful and now design has to be, it has to have a wider remit. You have to be thoughtful on many different levels and the main one of those is on a biospheric level. But what you need is governments and you need big businesses and you need designers and you need entrepreneurs to understand how big this opportunity is. There is gold in this stuff, literally gold. If we, if we look around at this and we look at this film in 30 years and I show it to my children, they're going to laugh. They're going to look back and say, did you really used to smash stuff up? Did you really not know that there was gold in it? So the Great Recovery Project, by exploring how it is, working with the public, with designers, with industry, with inventors, that we can uh, develop ways of producing products which mean that no waste takes place, that everything that is used can be used again. It's a concrete example of the kind of thinking that we need if we're going to thrive in the 21st century. So we need to change the way we design for two reasons. Firstly, we need to make these things much easier to get out and to reprocess, and we need to do that here in the UK rather than shipping them halfway around the world because there's money in this, there's a real massive opportunity. And secondly, we need to design products to have a second or a refurbished life built in. We need to design for the, for the circular economy, we need to think about what we do with products at the end of their life and how we can bring those materials back in. It's the materials where the money is, not the product, that's just a transient state of being and it's really important that we think broader than we would normally do. We want to bring together designers from all disciplines, engineers, chemists, politicians, marketeers, manufacturers, recovery facility experts, resource efficiency experts. We want to unpick the issues and look for the innovation gaps. The problems we get are taking apart electronics which can't be put through our machinery because they contain hazardous elements, such as um, LCD screens, where we have to undo the backs of them to take out the light tubes which contain mercury and by taking the back off we are usually involved with half a dozen different screwdriver bits 
um, different Allen keys, different nuts and bolts, it could be a much simpler process. We're kicking off in the autumn with a programme of really, really exciting hands-on workshops and a programme of events. At the end of the year, we'll be launching a competition looking for new partnerships between designers and technologists who want to be working together on a project about finding solutions around the circular economy. We're looking for people who want to be involved in something that is creative, challenging and game-changing. People who want to redesign the future. I would love to bring designers here. Yeah, you've got to break the cycle somewhere or the, or, the, or the linear process somewhere. And the place to break it is here because it's absolutely shocking the amount of stuff that's around us. To see your product ending up here, to see the thing that you've nurtured and developed become waste too early, that must give you sleepless nights. And that's why we need to start at places like this.